Okay, so I, I'm, first I want to apologize because as you can see, I'm a astrophysicist that is currently turning into a data scientist. So probably there is too much physics in this talk and not enough data science for your face, but well, I will do my best to, to still make it pleasant for you. So the idea is to use TSNI to detect those power arms of uh, the Milky Way. And you can see on the top left photo, for instance, that uh, beautiful galaxy with those power arms. And well, it's easy when you have a photo like that. But when you're on this talk, when you're on this plot where the galaxy is a bit inclined, it's, it's become very much more difficult to, to identify those power arms on something like that. And it can even be that you have a spiral galaxy with not really well-defined power arms. And then, well, actually I'm not sure what you would do in that case. And in the Milky Way, which is also a spiral galaxy, this is what you see. Because since we are in the Milky Way, well, we don't have external photos to identify those power arms, so we have to do it with, well, what we can do, but... Clip this on the microphone. Yep. Perfect. Uh, well, we, we cannot identify those power arms from, from the outside, so it's much more complicated, actually, in our case. So the idea is, uh, well, you use what you have, that is coordinates for, for stars or whatever objects you use and distances. And you are kind of bound to young objects because otherwise they move from their birthplace and then they evolve away from the spiral arms and also the spiral arms evolve with time. So you, you, you need to use young objects. And people have done that with masers. So from the acronym, you can guess that it's an extension of, of lasers, but except that they emit in the microwave. And you find those in, uh, around young stellar objects. That's basically stars in forming. So those have, those have a, a few mega years. And we know something like 200 in the Milky Way. And this, uh, these people really at all have, made, have made this model of spiral arms based on the, on the detection of these masers. And what I did is using another kind of tracers for which you also get good distances that are the Cephates that are pulsating stars. Uh, they are a bit older, so there is a chance that they already drifted away from their, from their birthplace. But on the other hand, we know something like more than 3,000 in the Milky Way, which in principle helps us to, to um, properly locate the spiral arms. And you can see here on the distribution in, in a specific direction that uh, the, the distribution of the Cephids as peaks, those are the black, uh, the, black, uh, the black curves, that matches quite well with the uh, with, uh, spiral arm models of, of read from masers. So probably it's a good tool to, to also uh, identify the spiral arms. And I will skip some details because I guess I have no time. So here are the cephates uh, located here. And uh, just uh, very quickly, you can see that there are some areas. Uh, from here, it's not very easy to see, but you see some blank areas in, the, in this, in here. It's just probably at the, at the, at the, at the bottom of these like, cone, uh, cone structures, there is a big cloud that prevents from seeing what's behind. And then we, we don't detect the stars in this region. And that will have an importance uh, later. So, well, if we talk about spirals, uh, we will start with, let's say, the logarithmic spiral. And if you, if you um, try to make it a bit easier, you go in a slightly different space where you expect to have linear features in the, in the uh, theta and logarithm of radius space where radius here or R is a distance from the galactic center. And uh, theta is just the angle. You, have a, uh, you start uh, somewhere, you have a reference, and you turn around the, the Milky Way, and then you define an angle that way. And then the idea is, well, you, you try to use TSNI, which is a, a, a dimensional, dimensionality reduction algorithm to try to identify groups of, of cephates, uh, hoping it will do better than, than uh, and especially not biased like a human would be. Uh, and then, so that's what I did, uh, and uh, only using two dimensions, the coordinates, and that's what it looks in the bot, uh, top left uh, in the TSNI space. And then in the TSNI space, it will be completely gray. And then I use HDB scan, which is a clustering algorithm to identify these groups without uh, human biases. And some of them are just bogus. Some are real groups, hopefully. And when you return to the, no the, the, the let's say, normal space, the original space, you find quite some linear features that you expected. And also, again, these bogus, like the orange or the pale blue here. Those are, so I guess I have no time to explain why, but we can chat later. <laughs> Uh, and then if you return on the, the, the original coordinates, then you, you, you already see features that look like spiral arms. And then you can, on this uh, linear plate, you can do a, a linear fit. And then you obtain this like olives uh, um, um, uh, segments on the spiral arms. They fit quite well with other methods, except this one, which was uh, probably uh, completely wrong. And uh, maybe the good thing is that you detect new features. For instance, uh, this one that has not been seen by any others. Uh, 
So I, I think it's a pretty, uh, pretty, uh, I was actually positively impressed by the results. I'm not stressed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. So I had to cut a lot, but we can chat later. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot.